the Samson Picture Lot. Uh, I'm here with Olivia. And Olivia, you have a nice quilt that's hanging up. Thank you. And, uh, what, what, what do we call this? Um, I guess the gallery the space gallery of space? DC yeah. WebFest. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about the quilt and how you created it? Definitely. My quilt is a combination of textiles that I printed um, from a line of code which um, prints basically a pattern that is very aesthetically pleasing. Um, I did nine different patterns and um, decided to display them via a quilt because it's such a traditional method of displaying fabric. Um, they are beautiful, you know, when you interact with them, but there is such a deeper story um, behind each pattern. Um, and so when you dig into that story, you can see my process, uh, which I am happy to talk about. Yeah, definitely. So now, did you actually sew the quilt together, or how, how exactly does that work, going from the computer to what's now on the wall? Uh, so the quilt itself, I worked with two other friends of mine to produce, um, probably 20 man hours behind the scenes to produce this one quilt, uh, which is not quite bed size, it's meant for a wall hanging. Um, and the quilt itself is a Fibonacci sequence, which is a traditional mathematical equation. Um, and what you see on the wall is a golden rectangle, um, repeated, um, it's basically the square of squares. So when you see the output, you can see um, the iteration of each of these squares in the sequence. Um, it makes a beautiful quilt because there is uh, a pattern that you can really see as an observer. Um, and each of the fabrics, uh, nine different patterns were produced using a line of code that I ran through an emulator uh, from Commodore 64, which is an old school technology, um, but really fun to play around with, kind of returning to an old tradition, which is exactly what quilts are as well. So returning to an old tradition and merging both technology and crafting in these two methods. Now question, um, what does it mean for you just to have your quilt here at DC WebFest? And I've never seen a quilt at a festival before, so. Um, so when I found out about this event and was invited to come, um, what they really wanted me to express, I think, was this digital side um, with media. And so merging the two as something that is curated and on the wall, um, but tells a deeper story about both women, computation, textile production, um, and just kind of museum curating in general. You know, this is hanging on the wall, but it tells such a deeper story that is digitally mediated at the same time. And Olivia, where can people find you or your work? So my work can be seen on digiprint.co. Um, I have a website, and uh, feel free to explore more about it. <laughs> All right, awesome. Thank you so much for coming Thank on. You. Kevin Sampson, Picture Lock. I'm here with Brandon Russell, yeah. the creator and director of A Walk of Shame. Yeah. I must say, I'm, I was very impressed with uh, just the, the, the cinematography, as well as the way that you edit it. Um, first, how did you come up with the idea? Um, well, I mean, the idea for me is kind of, uh, you know, I've really been into music, you know, my, I guess for the last t 10 years or so, you know, and I've been DJing and stuff like that. And uh, I've kind of, um, you know, a lot of my friends were experimenting with online dating and things like that. And I was trying to think of a way to, you know, kind of combine the idea of like, um, you know, the way modern society kind of acts, you know, the way music kind of, um, you know, is infused in everything that we do and then kind of incorporate that with, um, you know, the idea idea of the modern I don't know. I want to say dating philosophy, the way things happen in the dating world. So, and do you have like a, a certain nostalgia as well for the past? As you said, as a DJ, more of the tactile, you know, the cassette tapes, the the, the vinyl. Oh yeah, no, and 
that's a big part of it too. So yeah, um, you know, like with an episode four there, like you know, it's kind of a, that story really is was kind of like my story for like I remember you know trying to make mixtapes when I was a kid. Like it was always this really difficult thing to do, and you know, it, it's such a like a great thing to get a mixtape. You know, during that time, you know, like someone gave you a tape, they had to spend hours to make this tape, and you know, it's it just meant something. Now you know, music's such a commodity; it's it's did everywhere. You, did you ever have like that that girl that you were interested in? And you like made her a mix. Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> I was the king of that, man. I made I've made like five of those. You had that artwork and everything. You had to put some time into that. You know, really show you care. It's very important. Right, so. right, exactly. All right. So, what are your plans for the future of the series? Um. Well. You know, um, well, if you notice, the title is The Beaten Path, Walk of Shame. Um, we're kind of hoping to do it kind of like an anthology series um, where, you know, maybe there's different, there'll be different um, segments where, you know, we go to different areas or different themes every season and we kind of like bring in elements from each season and we kind of combine them. Uh, it's kind of a little bit kind of like True Detectives kind of doing now with like, you know, breaking it up that way. So. Okay, cool. And where can people uh, find the uh, series? Um, you can find it at walkofshame.tv. Um, if you go there, you can check it out. We also, um, it's we're calling it a visual mixtape, so we have a big emphasis on music. Um, all of the tracks in the uh, episodes, um, we're working really closely with DJs and producers to help like really craft this like really great musical experience for each episode. So we also at the website we have uh, mixtapes and um, things you can download. You can put them on your iPod, listen to them, and we release them like monthly as the kind of companions to go with the episode. So, so it's a lot of cool stuff out That's there. Awesome, man. Yeah. Well, good luck, Brandon. Thanks for coming on the show and talking with me. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, Anytime. <laughs> right there with the cast of Walk of Shame, we have Stephanie, Lance, and Brent. What's up, Kevin? Yeah. What's up? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm, I'm going to start with Stephanie, if that's wait, okay, wait, fellas. Wait, wait. Ladies <laughs> first. <laughs> Stephanie, can you just tell us a little bit about your character and then also what it means to be a part of the series? Sure. Um, so I play Cindy, and she's a blogger. So in the, the piece that we saw tonight, she was interviewing uh, um, Theo. Uh, so, uh, but part of what happens with Cindy is that... Uh, yeah. A couple of things happen with Cindy. You tell them, Cindy. So uh, Prince's character uh, creates um, a moonshine called Laserhawk, and he's desperate to get Cindy to try it and then blog about it. Gotcha. And so uh, shenanigans ensue. She tries it. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah she yeah. tries it. Yeah, she tries, she tries it. it a lot. But then you're going to have to wait to see what happens after <laughs> she tries it. She tries it again and then a little bit more. <laughs> hey, I'm going to pass this to you, man. Talk a little bit about your character. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Show. Sure. Yeah, Walk of Shame. It's great. It's like uh, you've got this beautiful blonde or misadventures in love. And, uh, and we're just talking about you. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> you charmer. Yeah. And, uh, and then her friend, the DJ, and his friend, the entrepreneur. Right. So you've kind of got these three perspectives, um, sort of of the DC scene. And uh, it's a nice combination of music and fun and acting. It's good. I play one of her misadventures. I'm Kevin, the douchebag, who she then runs into when she's on a date with the nice guy. Okay. And I kind of make their date a, a little bit of a living hell, gotcha. which was so fun to play. Yeah. It was I'm, a blast. I'm sure. Prince, you want to talk about your character? And, uh... I'll talk about my character a little bit. My yeah. character was Francis, and I was trying to get Cindy to do th some things. I was trying to uh, promote my laser hawk. So Prince and Francis is the same person. <laughs> so entrepreneur. So I was an entrepreneur trying to like, uh, yo, buy this, man. Buy this. This right. is this about to be the next wave. You're the hustle man. Yeah, the hustle. Right. <laughs> but not like hustle man. <laughs> not like hustle man, but I was hustle man. Yeah, I was. <laughs> But, no, 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 so pretty much I'm just an entrepreneur trying to get my business on the rock while trying to rock out with my homeboy Theo, DJ, he not here right now, but he trying to get on, on the map like with Cindy because she's a blogger and she, if we get in good with her, then Laser Hawk takes off, he take off, he talking to girls, well one girl, is <laughs> trying to get at her. I like the walk of shame, the whole concept behind it, like, what was it, beats, beats in uh, beast music, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you listen to it, the music. So, really quickly, just to, to wrap it up, what does uh, a, a web festival like DC Web Fest mean to you guys uh, 
as web series actors. Well, it's a chance to um, c connect and network with other actors and other uh, production houses, um, and it's a great way for independent artists and in independent uh, producers and directors to coordinate. So it's a really wonderful event. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Lance? Uh, yeah. No, I mean, I, I think it's love getting the word out because it's so you know there's so many things and it's so hard to see everything so it gives you an opportunity to sort of see what's good and what's worthwhile and uh, and yeah get it out there and it's just fun yeah. all right prince you close us out all right i'll close you out man something that i take away from this or i like about this is yeah network but i like to talk to people and just get to meet different artists uh, actors too but i like to call them artists i get to meet them talk to them and hopefully collab with them and make some magic. All right, uh, Stephanie, just tell us where we can find the show. So it's uh, walkofshame.tv, uh, and the hashtag is booze music sex. Awesome. All right, <laughs> thanks, thanks, guys. Thank you, Shane. Yeah. Hot? Yeah. yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> I'm very hot. <laughs> Burn. Burn. Oh, shit. Thank you. Yeah, she's a pro. I'm here with Susan Gordon, uh, one of the creators of the 100 Yard Stair. How are you? I'm very well. My my brother says I'm giddy. <laughs> so just a little bit, but that's yeah, cool. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about your web series? Okay, so 100 Yard Stare can be found on youtube.com slash 100 Yard Stare. <laughs> anyway, so basically it is a part of the Slenderverse. If you've heard of the myth Slenderman, it was created on a blog on the internet. Yes. It's a branch off, kind of like how people make different Dracula movies or vampire movies or zombie movies. It's its own version of the Slenderman story. And it follows three main characters, Avery, Macy, and Ellie. They're all female. Yeah, women! Okay, so basically it's just the story of how they become infected with the Slenderman virus. He's like a, he's like a virus is kind of what the whole idea is. Yes. Okay, so uh, what would you say is one of the more challenging parts of actually creating a website? Um, well, I edited and helped write it and acted and, and did pretty much everything, um, but probably for me um, would be editing. I spent Probably editing it over 24 hours for each episode. More than that, honestly, maybe a two days, hours and hours of my life. <laughs> Alright, so what hours. was the good part? What was the good the part? Good part was that. I mean, I learned how to edit. I made something, yeah. which is better than not making anything at all. Yeah. Um, and now I have something I... You can see growth in it. That's my favorite part, is that I grew as a person with the series. Because I did it for three years with me and my friends, and we started off as being freshmen in college, and now we're graduating this year. And you can tell the growth in us as people and the difference in what we created when we were younger versus what we made four years later. Right. Yeah. So, uh, where can people find the show again? Oh! Find you? Oh, well, you can find the show at youtube.com slash 100 yard stare. I'd also like to give a shout out to our biggest fan, Alexander Kozik, who is from Serbia, and he likes to make us posters, so thank you for that. Um, but yeah, you can find it on YouTube. We like subscribers, and also, we're going to be making a new web series called Bridgewater, so if you like 100 Yard Stare, we're going to start our um, fundraising campaign eventually in the next year. Cool. Yes. All right, well, thank you so much for coming on the show and talking to me. All right, guys, so I'm talking with the awesome uh, crew and cast of George Tonia. So let's start out with you. Can you just say your name? Wait, do I look? Look at, yeah. okay. Okay. You want I look at you. Yeah. So uh, just talk a little bit about your role as a uh, yeah. and as an uh, actor. Should I hold it or do you want me to know? I can hold okay. it. You can hold it, whatever you want. Um, so last, sorry, last um, year I had an opportunity in my film class to do a final project and I had, was friends with Sarah from Acting One and also friends with Arian. And I was like, let's, I was watching Portlandia a lot at the time, I was like, let's do something about these rich white girls at Georgetown that get annoying and let's make a show. So it started and then we kept making it afterwards because it kind of caught on and there. Kind of caught on, he's uh, being modest. So we posted it and within two days we had over 3,000 views on Vimeo, which, like, who watches anything on Vimeo? Right. So, and 
and then we got a lot of good positive feedback, yeah. so we kept doing it. And there's just such great improv actresses that each episode kind of like writes itself with them in front of the camera. So yeah. So you want to talk about your character? Yeah. And... So our characters sort of started. We weren't really sure where they were going, and they've created this sort of new identity for themselves. I'm Jessica, and in the first episode, I think what really captures Jessica is Phoebe's drunk on her 21st birthday and puking, <laughs> and Jessica Thank pets you. her with a Swiffer, because she, um, which support. for support, like they're there. Okay. But I think that Jessica really um, is sort of a classic Georgetown girl, except she doesn't really care about anything except herself. But she does have some redeeming qualities. You know, she loves Phoebe. She tolerates Stacy. Um, she's sort of the low-key influence because Phoebe, I guess. I guess Phoebe thinks of herself as the brains of the operation. Um, Jessica's the boobs. Jessica's the boobs. Uh, Phoebe is always trying to do something new, always trying to move things along for Phoebe and Jessica. They're kind of like... One person, two bodies, three boobs, I guess. <laughs> um, but uh, I do a lot of writing for the show, but um, we do do a lot of improv. Um, so where can people find the show? Georgetownia.com. And um, I mean, it's on Facebook, and we have an Instagram. Um, yeah. Instagram. We're like really bad Georgetown girls who can't use Instagram very well. because we're actually graduating in May. Oh, no. So this is almost the end of the series. Yeah. Um, but it's been a blast. So stay tuned for that episode, yeah. graduation. Yeah. Yeah. The G word. The G word that we haven't been saying it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on and yeah. talking thank to me. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. First off, I gotta say congratulations coming off of last week, Emmy Award winning Anacostia. Yes, amazing. <laughs> we had an amazing time in California. All right, so Pasha, your character is Dominique Johnson. Madam. Yes, Madam. Let me get Dominique it right. Johnson. I play an adult services specialist on Anacostia. Um, I'm new to the neighborhood, so not too many people know what it is that I do, but they're curious, not quite sure, so, you know, it builds a lot of intrigue and everything on the show. Can you tell me, how did you get first get involved with Anacostia? I met Anthony through a fashion show. I used to plus model, and I met Anthony at a fashion show, and at the end of the show, he came to me, and he was like, you know what, I'm thinking about putting a show together and I'm curious, you know, if you would want to be interested in doing anything. And he didn't know exactly when, you know, it might be starting or anything, but I said that I was interested, and sure enough, when he got everything together, he gave me a call. So, can you talk a little bit about your character and just what it means to be a part of the show? I think it's amazing to be able to bring someone's dream to fruition, and my character, I think, um, because you don't really see a lot of female madams in shows, you know, that, that role is usually reserved for men. It's kind of um, an empowering thing. You know, women like to see, you know, me take charge. I have men that work for me. I don't necessarily work for them. And so um, I feel like a lot of women are behind that character because, you know, I'm so strong and I take care of business and everything like that. I, I'm not a victim. Right. And what are you looking forward to in the future for Anacostia? Oh, my gosh. In the future for Anacostia, you know, I want everybody you know that's on the show to grow as actors and actresses um, and of course you know I want success for everyone um, on the show together as a show so maybe a TV show or movies or you know something like that but I definitely feel like we have big things coming for us you know we started with an Emmy nomination two Emmy nominations and Emmy wins so next year it can only get bigger and better from here right all right how can people reach you with you. I'm on Facebook, Pasha Diallo, Pasha Diallo at yahoo.com. All right, Pasha, thank you so much for talking thank with you. me. Thank you, thank you for having me. Right. My brother, first off, congratulations. Thank you, you, thank you, thank you. Okay, can I tell you that I am very proud of you. I mean, thank you. From creator to creator, creative to creative, to have an idea, then actually execute on that idea. Mm -hmm 
and keep going to the point where now you are an Emmy nominated Anacostia and Emmy Award winning Emmy, Emmy Award winning series now. Congrats, so congratulations. Yeah, it's, it's it's still not it still hasn't really fully calculated in my mind yet. It's right. still like ah, this show has won the an Emmy and everyone that's a producer on it is Emmy nominated. So right. it it still hasn't really sink, sunk in all the way. What would you say with this? Because I'm sure you've had a lot of time to reflect. What would you say your attitude is now going forward? Do you feel more confident? And, and not only that, what do you plan to do? No, I, no, no, I mean, my attitude is still the same. I mean, just because you have Emmy Award uh, winning series attached to your show now, it, it, it doesn't mean that you got to, it doesn't mean you have to rest on your laurels. It, it means that you have to work even harder to show sort of why your show is an Emmy Award winning um, web series, like one of three. Like, we're only one of three so far in the first African American web series to win an Emmy. Um, and so, really, the attitude or the work ethic is still the same. It's just kind of harder now um, to to sort of keep going, keep striving. Now that that door is open for us to have been nominated and to have won, now it's time for us to maintain that. Uh, now that the eyes of the industry are upon us, we really want to show a, a little bit more of what it was that got us in the room in the first place and sort of really deliver that. Um, but we've been delivering that for the past four seasons now. So it's just now that the Academy has created a category that recognizes us. But we've been turning out what I feel great storyline and great uh, drama for the last four seasons. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, all right, so what, do you have, what are your plans uh, for the next season? Have you started thinking about that or is it too early? Well, you know, currently we're still in the fourth season. We still have to wrap up some episodes for this season. There is a fifth season planned. It's going to start off with the season finale of the fourth season. And I have to say, attention. <laughs> We have what is going to shut the web series genre down as far as a finale. The finale is a reveal. It's a reveal of someone who's really been pulling the strings at Anacostia. And when you see this person, the people in the know are going to know that Anacostia is not playing with you all this year. It's just that serious. It is like beyond serious. You will know that we are not playing games this season. We, Our finales have always been those finales that people look forward to. This season four finale will be no different. It's gonna carry over until season five. And it's just, I'm, I'm sort of mind blown that we even got the person that is going to be our secret guest star. There's been no leaks. There's been no uh, spoilers on who the guest star is. People don't know if it's a male or female. Um, but all I can say is legendary. Legendary. And when you see this person, it's just going to be the talk of the web industry. Wow. All right. Well, we're here at DC Web Fest. Yeah. Uh, I, I, know, I, I believe you were here last year, previous year. I was here last year as a uh, speaker. And then um, the previous year, we were in it. This year, we were in it, too, um, with a lot of other great shows like like L.A. McCarr, which I'm familiar with from the Indie Series Awards out in L.A., and also uh, The Amazing Gail Pyle and uh, some other shows that I think were in uh, the L.A., were in the Indie Series Awards with us this year as well. And so what, what does uh, Web Fest actually mean to you? So for DC Web Fest, you know, what does this mean? Because this is actually, web, web series are very, don't get enough credit, you know what I mean? So what does uh, DC Web Fest mean? Well, DC Web Fest to me means it's a chance for not only the local web series creators to come out and see other works that they may not have a chance to see on a regular basis. I mean, I know when I'm caught up in Anacostia, I really don't get a chance to see that many web series, or sometimes when I'm in production, I don't like to look at a lot of other web series until I'm out of production. Um, so this is opportunity for me, like there were a lot of web series that I'd never heard of before that was on the list that I saw clips 
stuff that I want to go and check out now that I've seen the look that I've seen the clips for some of them were like really really funny some of them seemed like they were very interesting um, and some of them seemed like they were completely out of the box back shit crazy um, and whoop, bleep um, that's three drinks but um, so to, to me, any festival is an opportunity for us creators to not only come together and meet each other and sort of pat each other on the back, but it's also for an opportunity for a new audience to see your show because someone in that audience might be someone that you need to speak to that could maybe put your show in front of a larger audience or a larger platform. So these platforms are always something that I love to come out with with my crew to not only support, even when we're not in the festivals, we use see come out and support the festival in general because we are one of the pioneers I feel of this genre um, and for it to be in our own hometown like I'm only 20 minutes away from here so it was a no it was a no-brainer and, and you know I'm uh, this year has been really good for Anacostia like I have no I, I really have no complaints I'd never really expected any of this to sort of happen I fantasized about it dreamt about it and um, to sort of have it happen to us is an added bonus, but um, if it happened to us, it can happen to you. If you just keep the work, keep focus, like, a, like, like Martha Byrne tells me all the time, eliminate the static and just stay true to your course. It can happen, like it can happen to, like it can happen to you. It can happen to anyone if it happened to us. So it was like a real dream come true to be nominated and to win an Emmy. So um, the work continues. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for talking with me as always. As always. Now we can drink. <laughs> Enjoy yourself.